One month before an election, a DVD is circulated to 28 million homes, free, with a frightening message delivered in a powerful documentary format. The images are gruesome, the language disturbing. It has a purpose. It aims to convince Americans that they and Western culture itself are under attack by arguing that militant Islam is committed to a holy war against Judeo-Christian culture, represented by the U.S., Britain, and Israel. Jihad is at the core of Islamic culture and society, and militant Islam is a unified worldwide threat akin to but more dangerous than Nazism. Although obsession was distributed during the presidential election, most of those responsible for it are not Americans. With few exceptions, its makers and distributors belong to organizations committed to a neoconservative worldview and to the right wing of Israeli politics. The film was produced by the Clarion Fund. Clarion is registered in Delaware as a foreign not-for-profit organization. Adam Schatz, an editor at the London Review of Books, described Clarion as a front for neoconservative and Israeli pressure groups. Clarion uses the same address and shares staff with the Israeli group Eish HaTorah, Fire of the Torah, which describes itself as a group dedicated to educating Jews about their heritage. Adam Schatz noted that Eish has strong links to the Israeli settler movement. The film's executive producer was Peter Meyer, an alias for a person who remains anonymous. Production manager was Brett Halperin, also an alias. The producer was Canadian-Israeli Rabbi Raphael Shore. The director was South African neocon Wayne Copping. Mass distribution of obsession was an initiative of the Endowment for Middle East Truth, EMET. EMET is described by Interpress Service News Agency as a group of hardline U.S. neoconservatives and former Israeli diplomats that opposes any land concessions to the Palestinians. EMET's board and advisors include Daniel Pipes of the Middle East Forum, Meirav Wormser, the Israeli-born spouse of Vice President Dick Cheney's former top Middle East advisor, David Wormser, Carolyn Glick, Deputy Managing Editor of the Conservative Jerusalem Post and Senior Fellow with the Ultra-Conservative Center for Security Policy, CSP. Also on the EMET board are a former CIA director and fellows of the Heritage Foundation. And course, to make its arguments, East, Obsession relies on interviews and on skillfully lies. applied rhetorical and cinematic techniques. Who are the experts? Most of the interviewees were selected for their ultra-conservative views, like self-styled journalist Steve Emerson, who accused Muslims of being behind the 1995 bombing of the federal building in Oklahoma City, or Itamar Marcus, a supposed security and terrorism expert who lives in an illegal Israeli settlement in the Palestinian West Bank. Most do not have academic expertise in the areas that they discuss. One who does is Khalil Mohammed, an associate professor of religion at San Diego State University. After seeing the completed film, he complained that some of my answers were misused, like when I talked about struggle, jihad. Some idiot likened it to Mein Kampf. I don't consider obsession to be a documentary. He described one interviewee, Walid Shubat, as a known Islamophobe. Shubat is on the board of EMET. One relative said, the biggest act of terror he ever committed was to glue Palestinian flags on street posts. He is featured in a spot on YouTube emphasizing Barack Obama's religious Islamic connection. Another interviewee, Noni Darwish, is offered as a primary source on the ideology of radical Islam and on the role of jihad in Islamic culture. But Darwishi's father was killed in 1956 in the Egyptian-controlled Gaza, the first targeted assassination carried out by the Israeli army. He was a high-ranking officer in the Egyptian army and had nothing to do with today's Islamist organizations. Many of the translations in Obsession are provided by MEMRI, the Middle East Media Research Institute. Its founder and president, as well as some staff members, are former Israeli military intelligence officers. Its translations have been criticized for accuracy. In the film, we see the phrase Allah Akbar, translated as Allah is the greatest, rather than as the more conventional God is great. 
all the better to support the argument that Islam stands apart from and against all other religions. All of this is readily researchable on the Internet. Obsession lumps disparate groups and issues in the Middle East into a single religious cause, as though they were part of a single Islamist high command of terrorism. They've been very clear about it. They're the same as Hitler's goals, you know. Uh, kill all the Jews, crush the democracies, destroy Western civilization. They wish to strike down the West. To take obsession at face value, you would have to accept that the movement for Chechnyan independence, opposition to the war in Iraq, the Palestinian quest for self-determination, and dozens of other issues and phenomena in the Muslim world are part of a single threat to Western civilization. Obsession presents events in the 1930s, 1950s, 1990s, and 2000s as related, regardless of their separation in time and geography, in order to convey the idea that they are part of a single threat. Obsession presents assertions as fact with no supporting data. For example, it asserts that jihad means holy war, and is no different than Mein Kampf, that the idea of opposing Israel's occupation of Palestinian land is not fundamentally different from Hitler's attempt to eliminate Jews of Europe, and that anyone acting against U.S., British, or Israeli occupation any time in the last century is jihadi. Obsession blurs the distinction between radical Islam and Islam in general, by going back and forth between references to radical Islam, Islamic propaganda, Arab propaganda, and Arab nationalists. Obsession uses music and sound to heighten apprehension. The enemy is always portrayed against a background of driving bass tones and percussion. It uses uncredited and undocumented images to frighten. What does it really show? Is it staged? Or is it real? It juxtaposes images to imply argument, especially in the sequences that equate Islam with Nazism. It uses images to imply chronological connections between disparate events. The stark image is that they occurred closely together and recently. And obsession uses menacing images with no explanation but with a clear implication there is a global march of jihad. Obsession's makers have put up tens of millions of dollars to put the film in millions of American households. What makes it worth it to these Canadian, South African, Israeli, and American Zionists and neocons? Is it in Americans' interest to accept this view of the world and the global war that it envisions? Or is it better to recognize that there is a historical process at work in the Arab and Muslim world that is complex and multifaceted, and to accept that how America responds to that process will either feed the forces of war or support the forces of progress? Is it better to approach the Muslim world as crusaders and colonizers or as partners in search of peace? Obsessions makers clearly have a goal. How will we respond?